a lot of times people want to uh, label you. Well, everybody wants to label you. They look at you, they, you're, you know, you're black, it's whatever you know, they, they, they want to do. But if want someone to ask me who, what, what I am, whatever, usually I just say, I'm an athlete. You know, that confuses them. They want me to be more specific. And I'm always, you know, meandering, whatever it is. Uh, but you know, basically, I, mean, I, I consider myself a universalist. And um, a lot of times with these postings, you know, people see the, the flag in the background. It's a Honduran flag, by the way. And then they say, what, what's, what you, what's that about? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, uh, it has to do with the colors, the, the blue and the, uh, and, and the white. Uh, that's the colors for Ogun. And um, that was, you know, Ogun's colors in, in Brazil. It's like Ogun comes from, you know, like the, from the Yoruba culture, and Nigeria is blue. And then when you get to uh, to America, to Cuba, uh, Ogun's colors, uh, North America, that is the Northern Hemisphere, changes to uh, red, black, and green. You know, with, actually, it's, it's green and black with a, a bit of red. This is a cap that I got from uh, uh, Professor James uh, Kanye, and. Uh, uh, Brother Kanye uh, sent gave his gift to me. I sort of like this Sankofa bird, meaning that you should look back to uh, to move forward. You look back to move forward. That Sankofa, basically, you know. Uh, so anyway, so I'm, I'm doing my, my research here. I had to, I came across some 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 stuff, and and it, it, it got me to thinking because uh, one of the cats that looks at my videos and, and saw the flag and wanted to know about it, and I explained, I tried to explain to him, but that part of this goes to, um, I, I, basically, I don't know, my, my father was like a one night stand with my mother, you know, and, 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 and basically in that kind of situation, uh, you don't know, you don't know exactly where your lineage lies, you know, maybe, but in my, in my mind, because, of, because I've traveled so much, uh, I know exactly where my lineage is, where my DNA is. I, I know exactly. And it has to do with this. Follow this little story here. Um, I believe uh, there's a, a from Honduras, this thing called the Raritan Islands, you know, and that's where the uh, captives were, uh, were, were deposited <laughs> onto Raritan Island, the boulders of Raritan Islands. Um, and they, they were deposited there, uh, and they were supposed to live there, and so they sort of moved off. You know, the Griffins called the Griffin culture, the, the Griffin people. They're the ones that were deposited on the Raritan Island uh, from the Arawak folks, um, and, and so they had to make their way from from basically Honduras up to Belize and on down the coast. You know, things like uh, um, uh, what Nicaragua, like Bluefields, Nicaragua is a is a um, is a Griffin, a stronghold. I think like Costa Rica, all the way down to the Colón, Panama, where I, where I think that's where my, you know, my lineage goes through Colón, Panama, and that Griffin of people there, all the way down to South America, Venezuela, and those kind of things. So that's where the people, you know, the stronghold is, is, is the, the Griffin of people, or, the, or some people say Garifuna people. So here I am uh, um, um, uh, thinking about this, not thinking about it, but, but realizing that uh, people won't, they, they need that, that, t that DNA testing to be sure, scientific, whatever have you. And my thing is, no, when I was in Belize, you know, the southern part of Belize, I felt that that's where my, my people went through somehow, you know. When, uh, when I was in uh, uh, when I was in places like, uh, uh, like the Gambia, if you feel like the Gambia and, and, and also um, uh, basically Senegal, you feel that your spirit, your lineage has gone through that going through this area. So you, you so, so for me, I don't have a question of, you know, my lineage, my, my ancestors or whatever have you. I have no question of that because I actually, uh, in West Africa, I actually feel that, you know, when I'm there, I actually feel that lineage there. When I'm in, in, in Brazil, I actually feel that. So I'm not confused about, personally, about where I come from, whatever have you. So anyway, one of these, uh, one of the guys, he, he, he wanted to uh, give me a flag, this flag here. Of uh, of Benin. Now the thing about Benin is Benin's colors. All right. The thing about Benin, which is interesting, is that uh, in the early 2000s, you know, late, late 1999, the then uh, president of Benin had this idea to uh, basically apologize for slavery. All right. And uh, so this, this paper uh, or this article deals with uh, with three different uh, West African nations uh, dealing with slavery: uh, Nigeria, Ghana, and Benin. All right. And there's uh, three different uh, different approaches to the question of apologizing for slavery. 
or just apologizing for slavery, right? Now, the Nigerian approach, uh, uh, some tribal, this is back in 2009 or something like that, some tribal leaders were taking, to, uh, taking the position that since slavery occurred a long ago, uh, the perpetrators of the crime are, are, are owe their sins uh, and, and do um, uh, own their sins and do not uh, and, and will cannot bequeath remorse to their descendants. This is the same argument that you know that the the, the white the white folks use you know in the states. You know, oh, well, that happened such a long time ago. It has nothing to do with us, but it does. You know why? Because the benefits that you got from that slavery, right? The, the wealth you got from saying still it is, has has kept on growing all all these years, all these decades, all these centuries, right? Whereas the slave situation kept on being put down, 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 down. So you have, you have the people that benefit from slavery keep on getting the wealth. The people that was victims of slavery, their, their wealth was not only stripped away, it keeps on being stripped and their rights keeps on being stripped away, but you know they, they lose power. So you have this economic power that keeps on growing from slavery and you have this economic power, that, or this economic situation that keeps on decreasing for the victims or, or, the, or the, per, per, the people that were enslaved, okay? So the Nigerian model, ah, please. Then you have the Ghanaian model, uh, uh, apologize to African Americans for slavery. By contrast, uh, it, it was largely a, a business decision. Uh, in other words, um, it, it would uh, form strategic for streets, a stronger uh, tourism for, for the economy and like that, and uh, closer ties to America, uh, make it easier for black Americans to uh, visit, immigrate, and, uh, and own land, invest, and start a business. In fact, recently, um, there was another saying that, hey, you know, you can get free citizenship in, 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 in Ghana, in repatriate to Ghana, yeah, I don't know, Ghana, or some Ghana, I mean Ghana, and, uh, and, and, and you'll be square, okay? So that's, that's another approach. Now, uh, the president, again, the president of Benin at the time this, uh, uh, that, that started this whole apology tour, if you want to put it that way, uh, uh, Matthew uh, uh, Karaku is his name. Uh, he was a former president at the time. Um, he, uh, he, he convened, uh, he was one of the most active West, West African leaders in, in, in trying to apologize and, uh, for the culpability in, in slavery. Let me just stop right there for a second. Uh, because um, just like uh, J Professor James Small explained to me one time, well, people don't really understand this, the, the whole slavery situation. First of all, you know, you had the whole Arab kind of thing. They've always been trying to get into the thing, and they kept on trying to try to get into Africa, trying to get into Africa, and so that was one happening. Then when the Europeans came with their guns and stuff like that, trying to get into Africa, another way they got through. Remember, it would happen things like this. Maybe I'll put a link where, where if I can find it, where uh, James explains this. Uh, but what happens if you have a small village, you're farmers, you have a small village, you know, and some people with horses and guns or whatever have come to your village and say, we're going to be back in a month, you know, like, like, like the Magnificent Seven, you know. We're going to be back in a month and we need, uh, you know, we need 15 men, we need 10 women, and we need six children, you know, that you, you give to us, and, you know, we won't destroy your village, whatever have you. Now, there's a bunch of things happen. Now, remember, you... you this is your community. As they come back in a month, you're going to give up your your cousin, your your your, your nephew, your 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 son, your daughter, whatever have you to 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 these slaves. No, you have previous wars or previous situations where you have people that were enslaved for, for different kind of things, paying off debt maybe. You you, you lost a war, whatever have you. So you have or people just uh, uh what do you call it. Uh, immigrants come to your area. Well, you hold them. So when these slaves come back, you give them those those folks. I'm not apologizing. I'm just saying that these this there's a lot of machinations around this whole thing about Africans are also responsible for slavery and all, all back and forth. But that's not even an issue because uh, let, let me just go back to uh, uh, to the thing when when uh, when this former president you know, Benin uh, uh, suggested this. Um, but most of it, it was, you know, it was, it was like a political thing because there was a lot of series of, of corruptions at the time. You know, it was about 1990, you know, end of the last century. Uh, anyway, the, 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 he sent his ministers, and people want on on an apology tour, I say apology tour, but the then uh, Minister of the Environment and Housing, in a visit to Virginia in, in 2000, you know, he says, uh, we cry forgiveness and reconciliation, right? The slave trade was, is a shame and we do not, uh, and we do repent for it. Okay, that was, that was his, his statement. And, um, and, 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 uh, and Benin's initiative uh, has been uh, most cited 
uh, this this uh, going in a party has been most cited um, as the as the way to go, you know, uh, to reverse the state of a to, to, to no well, the way to go to apologize for slavery, you know, and not give a financial reparations. In fact, you know, one of the things that was you know, one of the models. Uh, well, anyway, now let me go. I want to go to this whole thing about these uh, what America thinks about reparations because it's dismal. But I was think I'm, I'm up here thinking uh, about all this stuff, and I realized that uh, people don't really understand this whole thing about wealth and wealth gap or whatever have you, and and, and and they just think, oh, if you just give somebody some money, it's going to solve everything. No, this it doesn't really really work like that. So this this uh, apology is good that that the apology that. Came from the from the from the president was actually a part of apologies where you don't have to ask for it. Somebody comes and apologizes, or you know, if we keep on asking for uh, apologies, that's we don't need apologies. We don't need crocodile tears. We ask for money, reparations. No, ask we're demanding reparations for the for the for the livelihood that you stole, and it could come in a, a, a bunch of forms. But more importantly, these are three African um, uh, solutions to this uh, apologies or whatever have you. I have a, a my my thing right now is that. If uh, we can have this uh, situation where all of Africa is united, like one, you know, one thing you have a passport for all of Africa, you get an all of Africa passport or whatever have you, then the people in the diaspora, you know, they also should have a, a visa to go through all of Africa, and that's a form of reparations. Then you can, and they can invest in any place in Africa they want. Blah blah blah. That's a form of reparations that Africa can can initiate for the diaspora, for, for specifically African Americans, but anybody in the diaspora. Uh, our reparations in America, well, we have to work that out. That's something else. So I just want to talk a little bit about reparations. Sorry it takes so long, but ah, that's the way it is. Um, it's always that way with me. T, from the Pattersons, taking the trench to bed, letting you know what I only suspect.